That is a quality foot. Okay, before we get started, I just gotta ask that you please go check out part one of this video. Second, I've also got to say that I haven't been easy on Dan Schneider. These theories are crazy and insane, and if they're true, then Dan Schneider is a total creep. But for legal purposes, anything that I say about Dan Schneider is only a theory. However, in the video today, we're going to dive further into the Nickelodeon Creep Club. If you remember the last video, I actually referenced the Nickelodeon Creep Club, something that Alexa Nicholas actually posted and is very vocal about online. The Nickelodeon Creep Club is actually a list of producers and actors uh, that have worked with Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider um, that have allegations of abuse, sexual abuse, and other terrible things like that. We're also gonna be diving further into the Nickelodeon scandal iceberg and yeah, so here's part two of the horror at Nickelodeon. The next person we're gonna talk about in the Nickelodeon Creep Club is Brian Peck. Brian Peck has been dated to work with Nickelodeon since the late 90s. He's been credited on Good Burger, All That, Keenan and Kel, and The Amanda Show. And in 2004, Brian was actually charged with 11 different cases, including lewd act upon a child and sodomy of a person under 16. That's right guys, Danny Boy's friend Brian Peck is a convicted pedophile. And this isn't a theory, this is something you could actually go and Google yourself. Brian Peck. Brian was also charged for substance abuse of anesthesia. And another dark fact about this case is the child he abused was actually a Nickelodeon star. Peck was sentenced to one year in jail as well as four extra months. And after 16 months in jail, he went on to Disney to act in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. He voiced London's Mirror. Talking to the mirror. Two words. Gorgeous. <laughs> That's right, a convicted pedophile actually went back on to work with kids. And even though his IMDP page references that he is a registered sex offender, his Hollywood career is still healthy. And lastly, on the topic of Brian Peck, it's actually been confirmed that he actually used to run a comedy boot camp alongside Dan Gittin the Van Schneider. In 2017, the Revenge of the Sis podcast had an anonymous source come on for an interview. The anonymous source told her stories of her encounters with Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon back in the late 90s. She actually went into detail about these comedy boot camps, and what she said was disturbing. She told stories about these pool parties that Dan Schneider used to throw. She even talks about her audition process that involved her having to take off her shoes and talk about how much she loved being barefooted. Schneider, um, the, the tapes to see who you would want on the show. And um, of course, you know, we always ask like, oh, what do we have to do? Like, what would you like us to be doing once we're in there? And um, my agent told me, he, you know, he's like, it's gonna be like, a, he's like, you gotta just take off your shoes, just like run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. And at the time, even, you know, it was like, okay, that's weird. But I didn't think anything of it because I was still young. Right. And then when I saw other kids doing it, like their parents were like, take your shoes off, like we're going in, like this is it, this is your thing. You know, it was all the kids that were wearing like the short shorts, like the, you know, spaghetti strap tank tops, you know, things that were a little more open and less reserved. And then once we um, got into the last room t before my audition happened, my mom kind of looked around and was like, this is wrong there's just something really wrong about this. And I, at the time, I was really upset because I wanted to do this. Obviously, and yeah. other kids were, you know, getting to do it. And then I was realizing, my, you know, my mom's like, why is a producer wanting a ton of videos of kids with just their feet? And according to um, a girl that I, you know, who was my friend, who we went to the audition together, her audition consisted of just the camera being pointed at her feet. And it didn't make any sense to my parent, my mom, and my mom obviously pulled me out of it and sat me down that night and was like, there's something really messed up about the industry. And she said that, you know, she wants to see me reach my dreams, but not, not like that. And here's the next crazy part. This video is now unlisted. 
That's right, for some reason, the Revenge of the Sis podcast had to unlist their video. So the only way for you to see this video is if you have the link to it. This being a massive story for their podcast, it would make no sense for them to take down this video, unless they were threatened with some sort of legal action. That's right, I see you. You thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. And lucky for everybody watching this video, I have the link to the video and I will put it down below. Go check it out. It's it's crazy. It is a crazy video. It it really is. It's it's disgusting. It is crazy. It is long and it is very interesting. Hey Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my vine. Do you like my vine? Vine. 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 Look what you've done to me. The strange vine you just watched was actually posted by Jeanette McCurdy when she was still on the show Sam and Cat. Nobody really thought about it much whenever she first posted it, but recently Jeanette McCurdy has opened up about her time with Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. I very much have to recommend that you go check out her podcast because she talks about this sort of thing a lot. She actually opens up about this sort of things on her podcast uh, with other people that were like her. And on June 10th, 2019, Jeanette McCurdy actually uploaded a video to YouTube titled, He Touched Me. The video actually shows a very distraught young girl who is trying to explain to her mother that she had been touched. The video is actually very upsetting and very hard to watch. And in the video's description, she actually explains that the video is loosely based off of her life. Many people now believe that the original Vine was actually a call for help. Net was also recently on the Michaela Peterson podcast. She goes on to reference a producer that was actually very abusive to her and her co-stars. Uh, yeah. Oh, what about what about the bad parts? That sounds easier. Um, bad, it certainly is. Bad parts. I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of abuse that happens. I, I worked with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer. Um, like, I mean, even talking about it now, my my face gets hot thinking of it just Ooh. because. You know, he'd say things like, you guys want, you guys will work, you would work at Yogurt Land if you didn't work for me. And he would just scream. How old were you? I was, uh, when I started the show, I was 13. And the way she describes the producer sounds very similar to the way Alexa Nicholas actually described Dan Schneider. Big for me, I felt so small. I have like, there's like five people in front of me that are all adults that are like Viacom and Nickelodeon and Dan's right in the middle. So like directly across from me, does not look happy. Um... And basically they just went on this, this whole thing that I, you know, it's not Nicole 101, it's called Zoe 101. If I wanted my own show, I should have gotten get, like wouldn't got one. Um, I have to basically be nice to the, I have to like handle whatever the lead character is dealing with because I'm a side character and I don't matter when it comes to like in industry terms. Um, I have to put on a good face, like I can't take both. It just like, it went on and on and on. Like maybe there was some truth in what, like Dan was like, maybe there's some truth in what Brittany said. Like maybe you shouldn't be in this industry. Like maybe it's too much for you. Like you can't handle it. It's like- This confirms the allegations of Dan Schneider's temper, as well as the idea that he would gaslight his performers. This is a grown man doing this sort of things to kids. The last thing we're gonna talk about today is something that I actually noticed on TikTok. And it's something very strange that was noticed on the show Victorious. A different soundbite would be played at the end of every episode. The soundbite would be a line from the show taken out of context. And it would wind up saying something very odd just like this. Sometimes I do it to myself. This is an ongoing gag that has been going on in Dan Schneider's shows since at least Zoe 101. But it's specifically odd with this show because the lines taken out of context could reference something very inappropriate. Here comes that feeling. I mean, you don't need me to describe to you what this clip sounds like. How bad do you want this? And this was in every episode of Victorious. It's also weird to think about the fact that this was made for kids by kids. And there you have it for part two. Once again, I do have to state that this video is mainly just theories. Nothing about Dan Schneider has been taken to court just yet. Um, so until then, innocent until proven guilty uh this is all i could really do to help out but once again i do want to ask of you to please go check out any of the videos that i referenced in this video uh, i'll link all of them down below uh, this is a very fun series to talk about i also think it's pretty important i hope more people look into this case and uh something is done about it other than just firing dan from nickelodeon because if he did these things it's disgusting, it's terrible, and I think you should be held accountable for it. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments what you want to see in part three. 
because I am planning on doing a part three to this series. I'm actually hoping to make my first full length documentary where I will edit together all the parts of the series and I will actually uh, edit in some stuff that hasn't been a part of this series to make an actual full length documentary that's worth watching. So uh, also let me, know, let me know in the comments if you'd like to check that out, um, if I actually do it. Uh, so yeah, like always, be nice to each other.